Welcome back everyone and it's time to go balls D. Today we are talking about the strongest character in Boruto as of this moment. Uh no, it's not Naruto anymore. That's why he's in it! Uh no, it's not Sasuke. He's always out of chakra and their era is over. Oh my god. They pretty much got nerfed into freaking side characters, bruh. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm a side character, but I, I might as well go to the house. I might as well go to the house but they kill me. Hell no, not this trash. It could be Boruto if his pure idol jutsu was active, but as of Boruto chapter 67, Kawaki has become absolutely broken. Boruto and Kawaki are the most dripped out characters in the show, and they have become freaking aliens that far exceed the capabilities of humans. We aim to explain Kawaki's entire story arc to arc, including all of his abilities on how he became the strongest character character that has surpassed the likes of even Naruto and Sasuke combined. And yeah, I get it. Before you type hateful comments about Boruto regarding this, oh, frick. Oh, too late. You, you already have, haven't you? Yeah! You already said something that brought this trash. <laughs> Now let's be serious, I'm not kidding. Boruto and Kawaki can easily be scaled to be stronger than Naruto and Sasuke combined in the near future. In fact, in this video right here, we already explained how Boruto has surpassed them. So make sure to turn on the notification bell for the channel in case you missed it. Okay, so firstly, let's take a quick look at Kawaki's power level before chapter 67. I want to establish Kawaki's natural talent and capabilities before he even had a major power boost. This will put all of us on the same page to understand why he became so strong. We first saw Kawaki in chapter 24 of the manga, after Kara's airship crashed. In the next few chapters, Kawaki showed his insane strength by erasing half of God body in an instant. Now we wouldn't be mentioning this if it wasn't a considerable feat because we were told Garo was an outer member of Kara which means he was at a similar level of power as Ao, a seasoned war veteran who was known and respected by the Kage for his ninja capabilities. Ao dominated most of his battle against the complete Team 7 in Boruto anime, even managing to kill Konohamaru's best friend and overpowering this supposed, you know, elite Jonin of Konoha. Like guys, I'm gonna be serious. Play the clip, man. This was an embarrassing oh performance. I need to show you what Konohamaru did, fam. <laughs> Bitch, are you dumb? Another one. Another one. We do not care. Essentially, Ao and Garo scaled higher than an elite Joni, but Kawaki displayed a vast arsenal of abilities that surpassed any of them. Please keep in mind, during that point of the story, Kawaki didn't even know that something like Chakra existed. So when we witnessed him tanking hits, using his footwork and taijutsu, it all stems from his own natural talent that Jigen nurtured for him. Every feat Kawaki achieved in his first fight against Garo, it was without chakra control and a weaker version of the karma seal than he currently has in chapter 67 since the resonance with Boruto had not yet occurred. Now there is a huge reason why Kawaki can achieve such amazing feats in power at such an early age and it all stems from his origin story. Kawaki's story begins with his abusive father who'd let out his frustrations on the poor child for what seems like forever. Kawaki always worked hard for his father's desires and received nothing in return. As a result, this made him of course extremely resilient, being able to take on more pain than others. His abusive drunken father forced him to work as a woodcutter to earn money to purchase alcohol. Kawaki's entire life was a mistake. As 
as he states this himself to Boruto when he first arrived at their house that he would rather not live than be in this atrocious world. This mentality developed from childhood where every single person he ever met in his life took advantage of him. For example, Kawaki expressed interest in a goldfish a merchant had where he was invited to a show the following day. His father later discovered the invitation in his pocket and then punished Kawaki for interacting with strangers by forbidding him from having dinner. The following day, Kawaki was beaten by two boys until he was rescued by the very same man who then offered him a job assisting him in selling goldfish in other villages. Kawaki was abused every single day and one night Jigen bought him for a large sum of money. Kawaki promised his father that he would do more work to earn more money but he was then knocked unconscious by his own father Kokatsu smashing an empty bottle on his head. Think about that sh**. I'm getting pissed just reading this script out loud fam. Like imagine your father being that trash. But it gets even worse. We find out later that the merchant attempting to befriend Kuwaki was actually a child trafficker and a nonce. What did he say? He was actually a nonce guys. He was hoping to seize Kuwaki for himself until Jigen had taken care of him pretty much killing him. Therefore due to all of this suffering Kuwaki had begun to build up a tolerance to pain both physically and mentally. This was one of the many reasons why he could become a perfect vessel for Ishiki Otsuski as the transfer for the karma seal via scientific technology could be completed correctly. Kawaki was taken to Amado's laboratory when he first arrived at Kara where Jigen promised him a reward if they became parent and child. This parent and child ritual was actually Jigen's attempt to transfer transmit his karma to a suitable vessel. Each child is placed inside an artificial womb and subsequently has Jigen's karma pumped into them through liquid form. The sheer power of having Otsuski DNA flowing through them is usually enough to kill most children instantly as they simply can't withstand it. However, Kawaki was different. He survived and upon waking up after the transfer of the karma, Kawaki had a mark on his left hand. From that day forward, Kawaki described the experience with Jigen as a living horror, despite his promises and assurances of safety. Yet again, someone was abusing Kawaki and using him for their own good. Now you're probably thinking, oh my god, if I went through that shit, bruh, I would be like Kawaki too, right? So then the things get even worse, fam. Wait a second, let me explain. As if that wasn't enough, Kawaki was then attacked by Code not too long after, who he was so envious of Ishiki's vessel that he openly despised Kawaki, claiming that if he wasn't a vessel, he would murder him with his own hands. This scared Kawaki and so he tried to escape the Kara headquarters, but then was stopped by Garo, another victim of Jigen's vessel trial. The escape attempt angered Garo and so he began choking him out, who in self-defense activated his karma and blasted him in the face, badly burning his head and completely obliterating his chin. This childhood was a truly harsh one comparable to Naruto. So as time went on, in order to further evolve into the ideal vessel for Ishiki Otsuski, Kawaki would be exposed to continuous grueling training under Jigen's command. He punished Kawaki throughout, insisting that he was only valued as a vessel for the karma and hit the kid anytime he questioned him. Essentially, Kawaki was trained in taijutsu, battle instincts and much more from an experienced Otsuski, which is invaluable training training for anyone who would want to become powerful since they are literal gods. He admitted this himself in chapter 58 to Sarada that he was given extensive training every single day in an intense manner that was different to the ninja way. His ideological belief regarding power stems from Ishiki Otsuski as this philosophy was beaten into him that power means everything and it should be attained by any means necessary. Furthermore during this time 
Iwaki's body was extensively altered through scientific ninja tools created by Amado. This technology was so advanced that the changes made to his circulatory systems and also neurologically, it turned him into a living scientific ninja tool with superhuman abilities that are comparable to a Keke Genkai. Kotasuke even stated that he thinks it surpasses the technology used for Naruto's prosthetic arm and Kawaki's body is a work of art. For example, Kawaki's bodily tissue can rebuild missing anatomy and recover quickly, allowing him to cure injuries in just a matter of minutes. He can also manipulate the anatomy of his arm, allowing him to turn it into all sorts of weapons like a large blade, extendable tendrils or shedding parts of it to turn them into projectiles. Kawaki can also create a massive shockwave from his body in all directions, including the ground below as we saw this when he woke up when Team 7 first found him. The strongest ability he boasted back then was the ability to absorb chakra, which is as good as you'd expect in a freaking world where chakra is essential to fight, right? As well as creating a blast using his scientific enhanced body so big that it freaking rivaled the size of a tail beast bomb, which was able to destroy an entire cliff edge. Later on, after exhausting all of his power against Garo, Kawaki started living with Naruto and the family in Konoha. As we all know, living with Boruto, who also is a karma vessel, it created a resonance, allowing their karma seals to grow at an exponential rate. Naturally, due to this resonance and more Atsuki DNA being released in his body, his strength increased as well. He had started chakra training around this time, and Kawaki's strongest form at this point saw him grow a horn similar to Jigen's, indicating higher access to Otsuski power. And to further prove that Kawaki has natural talent at a genius level, similar to Boruto Uzumaki, Naruto, the seventh Hokage himself, stated that Kawaki is a genius when he witnessed him learn chakra control to walk up a tree within an instant. He was a complete natural when it came to ninjutsu too, and through training with Naruto, he of course became a pro in using the shadow clone jutsu as well as also learning the fire style. Kawaki was able to perform a large fireball jutsu using one hand. Now if you scale this to the genin of Naruto, during chapter 7 of the Naruto manga, Kakashi was shocked that Sasuke could perform the same kind of feat and that was with both hands. So Kawaki being able to perform advanced fire style techniques with a single hand after only just learning what chakra is showcases that he had even surpassed Sasuke's natural talent at a similar age. This means once Kawaki learns how to use chakra properly and create his own jutsu, he will become even scarier than he already is in chapter 67. As we progress deeper into the vessel arc though, the final showdown between Ishiki and others takes place. In what seems to be a major surprise to everybody, Kawaki bamboozled Ishiki Shiki using the Shadow Clone Jutsu, completely overcoming the trauma that Kawaki had faced. With the death of Ishiki Otsuski, Kawaki was freed from his clutches. However, he was already 80% Otsuski, meaning he retained a large chunk of his powers. Whilst he couldn't absorb chakra anymore, he retained his physical strength and endurance as 80% of Ishiki's data still resided in his body. Due to this, he was far stronger than countless people, but he wasn't in the top echelon of ninjas. However, he could take on multiple Jonin who'd be around Konohamaru's level with ease. <laughs> just to look at Konohamaru's part where he tries to f fight Ishiki, that's just hilarious. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, this was a short summary of how strong Kawaki was before his new karma was given. Now, let's take a look at how he got this new power only karma and why it has allowed him to surpass the likes of Naruto and Sasuke. In chapter 59 of the manga, Amada mentioned that Naruto would likely die in a one-on-one -on -one battle against Ko. He hoped that by using Kawaki's love for Naruto, he would be able to manipulate Kawaki into becoming his pawn. Amada presented a plan to Kawaki that he can implant 
a strictly power only karma. Kawaki initially rejected the idea purely out of his hatred of the karma seal after all the pain that it had given him in his life. However, Amado didn't actually care about his opinion. When Amado replaced Kawaki's arm by rebuilding it using his tissue and cells and science technology bullshit, he also secretly implanted the new power only karma into him right then and there. All that was needed was an emotional trigger to reactivate the karma seal, which as we saw in chapter 64, he managed to when jumping in to save Naruto's life against Momoshiki. So far we have explained countless abilities of Kawaki, which include his body being scientific and his old karma seal and what those powers were. But let's move on to another ability he possesses as of chapter 63. As I mentioned, he has always shown himself to be a prodigy when it comes to harnessing the power of the karma. As we learned in chapter 63, the karma's true essence actually comes from drawing power from the previous Otsutsuki battle experience. The boosts they receive regarding things like power and speed are due to this phenomenon. As the karma continues to extract, the previous Otsutsuki experience gets overlaid onto the host's body and mind. This is how the likes of Boruto and Kawaki were able to utilize space-time ninjutsu with zero training. The knowledge for them to do so was always there, sitting in the back of their mind because of Momoshiki and Ishiki's wisdom. It is also how Kawaki completely erased his chakra signature despite not even knowing such a thing was possible before that day in chapter 61. Basically, Kawaki doesn't need to train extensively to achieve these abilities. Rather, he just has to dig around enough in his mind and body and also fight more people to use this experience to enhance his own. As Ishiki has basically already done the training for him over thousands of years. The boost in physical accolades allows him to go toe to toe with both Boroshiki and Code back to back, being able to take down two Otsutsuki level opponents with seemingly no problem highlights both his frightening level of raw power but also his durability as well. After all, the only thing capable of actually stopping Kawaki was himself when Damon reflected his own attack back at him in chapter 67. Remember we just mentioned earlier how Kawaki has superior regenerative abilities than normal humans due to his body being designed as a weapon itself. However, on top of all of this, with the reactivation of his karma, it also came with the ability to absorb chakra. In chapter 65 of the manga, Kawaki was able to absorb a massive Rasengan from Boroshiki almost instantly. This ability will always remain as an extreme extremely busted and overpowered thing in the Naruto universe for extremely obvious reasons fam. Like think about it, having this ability shoots one's defensive capabilities into the sky as they have to rely on less movement, endurance and everything else. They can just straight up say nah 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 I'm not eating that Rasengan today and boom the opponent's attack is gone. Even Naruto and Sasuke suffered from this problem when Jigen was doing it against them. We've seen just how busted this ability can be in a plethora of occasions in Boruto. This jutsu let Momoshiki annoy the living hell out of the Kage in his first fight against them to the point that they couldn't even use ninjutsu. And Jigen was able to use it to even absorb Sasuke's famous Amaterasu. Even the world's deadliest jutsu aren't worth trying against someone with such an ability as the only way to bypass the karma seal chakra absorption is by using a natural occurring element, such as the eternal flames from the flaming mountains that Kashin Koji used against Jigen, or you know other scientific technology like Boro's airborne virus, these are the only things that can't be absorbed by the karma seal. This already puts Kawaki at a dangerous and busted level but there's more and Harrison's gonna cover every other ability right now just for you guys. Okay now you're probably wondering at this point hang on a minute with how much Adil has explained so far Kawaki seems to be completely busted but what if I told you he has even more hacks? 
weeks. The main contributor to the monstrous strength Kawaki possesses comes from the fact that he can utilize all of Ishiki's abilities. These powers include Daikoku Ten and Sukun Hikona. Daikoku Ten is the power that allowed Ishiki to summon objects from another dimension, and Sukuna Hikone is his signature shrinking ability. Yes, so that does mean that Kawaki can summon those huge Otsutsuki cubes out of thin air. Now, if you don't remember the true power of these cubes, then let me explain just how busted they really are. Firstly, they can block chakra detection, preventing flawless teamwork, which would be a major hindrance for characters like Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto is known to be one of the best sensory ninja out there, so if he can't sense anything because of them, then no one can. Secondly, there is the sheer weight of these cubes. In the manga, nobody except Naruto in his Bion mode form has been able to stop these cubes. Although Naruto handled them in an extremely dominant fashion, <laughs> these cubes also crushed everybody else in a extremely dominant fashion too. And we all know that Naruto's Bion mode scales to be the strongest thing in the entire series that we've seen so far full stop. If you want to know a little bit more about that, we covered it extensively in this video, so if you haven't seen it yet, you silly little billies, that means you've not hit the notification bell, isn't it? Ah, thought so. Go on, hit it, make it ding. But where were we? Oh yeah, the cubes. Sasuke for one would have been dead if it wasn't for Boruto blocking the cube for a period of time with his compressed Rasengan. However, it was inevitable for him to fail, and Ishiki only actually let Boruto survive due to him being a vessel. In addition, Kashin Koji, who was a stronger and superior version of Jiraiya instantly got crushed by them and had to use a reverse summoning to escape before he died. He literally couldn't even understand what had just happened to him and he was defeated on the spot when it was used. So in short, essentially means that nothing will work against these cubes unless you just so happen to have a tailed beast lying around, you know, willing to sacrifice itself purely for you. Was that too soon? <laughs> In comparison, however, to Jigen as a vessel, Kawaki showcased a much higher level of natural talent when it comes to using the Daikoku Ten ability. The only thing we saw Jigen summon from his dimension in combat was chakra rods. It wasn't until Ishiki fully resurrected inside this faulty Jigen vessel that he was actually able to begin being more creative by summoning the cubes and pillars. Kawaki, on the other hand, is already matching Ishiki's level of summonings. We see Kawaki summon four of these cubes as well as two large pillars too in his fight against Boroshiki. And then of course there's the next ability, Sukuna Hikona. In chapter 38 of the manga, we saw how Jigen was essentially toying with Naruto and Sasuke for a while by spamming chakra rods out of nowhere by using Daikoku Ten to summon them, as well as Sukuna Hikona to shrink them and then enlarge them once they have impaled his opponent, which caused both Naruto and Sasuke to be ex extremely confused about what the hell is going on. You see, Naruto's ability to sense them was useless since by the time he would comprehend that a bunch of rods had been hurled at him, they had already pierced him. Now I'm not calling Naruto slow or anything here, <laughs> not at all. It's just that these rods are far too much for the whole known universe to handle. Sasuke could track these rods with his dojutsu, but even he admitted that they were just simply too fast for him to dodge them consistently. Boroshiki, however, in chapter 66, managed to dodge some of these rods as he scales just as high, but eventually they do land and hurt him significantly. But even then it was because Boruto began to take control of his body again. And since we know that this was Kawaki's first battle after gaining these powers, he isn't fighting at his true level. In chapter 66, we can see him say, I see, I'm starting to understand. Making it clear to us that he only has a rough idea about his true power at this moment in time. Even with just that rough idea though, like we said, he was able to take care of both Borushiki until Boruto woke up, and also Kai.
Code, who he actually forced to retreat, fearing for his own life. Whilst fighting Boroshiki, he was able to instantly react to his surprise attack, something that we all remember Sasuke couldn't do. And on top of that too, he reacted at such a speed that he even absorbed the Rasengan instantaneously whilst also then shrinking himself to dodge Boroshiki's kick. He then reappeared at full size behind him at a speed that is akin to teleportation as it is just too fast to see by the human eye. In fact, his power level during this fight reached such a level that he doesn't even need to absorb a Rasengan if he's not really feeling up to it. This is because his scientifically augmented arm was durable enough to protect himself from a direct collision between the two of them in chapter 66. As we know, straight after dealing with Momoshiki by killing Boruto, he immediately started throwing hands with Code, the man that we mentioned earlier that was stated to surpass Naruto in a one-on-one. -on -one. Kawaki was able to combine his quick intellect with his Sukuna Hikona ability to erase Code's method of escape. And well, <laughs> We all know how it went from there. He completely destroyed Code to the point where it wasn't even fair. He effortlessly blocked attacks and responded with punches backed with a tremendous amount of power and killing intent, to the point that even Code recognised straight away that he had no chance of winning. But now that we've actually explained both the old and new powers of Kawaki, it is about time that we finally scaled him. And to put it bluntly, we believe that the power scale diagram looks a little bit like this. You have Jigen, current Kawaki, Code with his limiters, Bodoshiki, and then Sasuke who could be stronger or equal to Naruto. Firstly, we know that Jigen would absolutely destroy everybody mentioned here as of chapter 67 of the manga. But what about Kawaki, right? In all honesty, scaling Kawaki is a bit tricky since there are no direct figures to compare him with Jigen in the aspects that decides the the victor. Technically, Kawaki should be stronger since he can use both the Daikoku Ten and Sukuna Hikone easily with the Karma Seal in a more advanced manner, as Jigen couldn't use Daikoku Ten to summon the massive cubes like Ishiki could. Furthermore, Kawaki is the perfect vessel, meaning that he can fight for longer durations than Jigen. However, despite all that, the current Kawaki would still lose against Jigen. The main differentiator between the two is experience. Jigen was being controlled by Ishiki himself, someone who had used these powers for centuries. On the other hand, there is Kawaki who is literally using these powers for the first time and is still figuring out how to harness Ishiki's battle experience properly. In chapter 67, Kawaki's attacking speed with the rods seems slower than that of Jigen's. We know this because Boroshiki was dodging a few of the attacks and rods as well as code too. And yes, we know that speed isn't equal to strength, but Boroshiki being faster than peak Naruto and Sasuke is completely outrageous. Momoshiki in his peak form was overwhelmed by Naruto and Sasuke fairly easily and these guys were thrashed around by Jigen like they were little kids. And so how could Boroshiki be scaled higher than Momoshiki's original form? That just doesn't make any sense. Therefore the conclusion that we have come to is that Kawaki is still extremely fast but the speed at which Jigen threw the chakra rods and reacted to attacks is far superior. However, even with all of this power scaling everyone loves to discuss in the community, the number one thing that you have to understand is this. All the feats that Jigen achieved in power scaling, Kawaki will and could eventually achieve in the time skip, if not very soon within just a few chapters. Kawaki is guaranteed to surpass Jigen due to learning how chakra works and can sustain the power. All that Kawaki has to do is just to tap into the thousands years of experience that Ishiki has to actually catch up to him. And after that, well, Bob's your uncle. Especially when you factor in how genius he would be at making his own jutsu on top of it as well. Code, with his limiters on, got absolutely destroyed by Kamaki, and the difference in power was just far too great, to be honest. As we saw in chapter 67, Kawaki completely annihilated him. If it wasn't for Damien's surprise interference, Code would have been a complete goner. Yet Code without limiters, now that could be a completely different story. According to Amado, Code without his limiters on is stronger than Jigen, and since Kawaki hasn't crossed Jigen's level just yet, we don't 
don't know who'd actually win. There is a decent chance for Kawaki if Code still has to rely on his claw marks since Kawaki's Sukuna Hikona is the natural counter. All he has to do is shrink them like he already has done and well GG. But from a story perspective, it would make sense for Code to be stronger than Kawaki by unlocking his limiters. That way, he and Boruto have to work together to defeat Code and the story can marinate everything in a great cohesive manner. Boruto's manga has made the power scaling here quite clear. Kawaki is currently the strongest character in the entire series, who currently scales higher than Naruto and Sasuke combined after their nerfs. This is because Amado stated that Code with his limiters can defeat Naruto or Sasuke in a one versus one battle, but as we've just witnessed with chapter 67, Kawaki scales way higher than this Code. Code had zero chance against him and was gonna straight up die. He landed no attacks in him whatsoever and had no real feats against him. And so what we can take away from this is that Kawaki is much closer to Jigen's power level than Code is, which makes it pretty clear that Kawaki is stronger than Naruto and Sasuke combined, like I said. And this is why everyone is afraid of Kawaki and his monstrous potential to take over the entire world. As we've seen in the time skip, he believes that the Shinobi age is over. Kawaki is completely infatuated with Naruto and would do anything to protect him, even stating in chapter 66 that he doesn't care if Shikamaru dies. He actually doesn't even care if the whole of Konoha died if it meant protecting Naruto. The guy even straight up killed his own brother. And it was Kawaki's childhood that made him become who he is today. A broken vase that was almost completed through Naruto's affection, but one piece will always be missing due to the deep scar it left within and the manipulation Amado did to make sure that the vase would never be complete and whole again. Which leaves it to Boruto to restore Kawaki's humanity in the future by being the brother that he loves and reminding him of their promise. The promise that they would save each other from their tragic destinies of death together.